uh, today's Zoom session, we'll be talking about air masses. Uh, we'll be looking at weather funds and different types of weather funds, pressure systems, synoptic charts. Uh, the objectives for this session is uh, to get an understanding on uh, air masses. Uh, if we know what air masses are coming, then we also know what kind of conditions uh, we can expect. We will be looking at the uh, different weather fronts, high pressure systems, low pressure systems, and then how to read uh, a synoptic chart, how to uh, understand what's gonna happen with the weather from a synoptic chart. Okay, so air masses. If, as I mentioned earlier, if we know um, what type of, uh, what kind of air we are, uh, that's coming with the wind, then we know what condition they will bring. In the, uh, in the UK, the prevailing winds are uh, southwesterly. And that means that the wind uh, is coming from the Atlantic. It will be what we call a tropical maritime air mass. It means that it's warm, warmish, and it's uh, also uh, full of moisture because it goes over the sea. So when it arrives in the UK, it normally brings uh, clouds and rain and also mild weather, not so cold. In the, uh, in the early uh, spring, when the sea is still cold and we get this warm air coming in, uh, the moisture in the air will condense and we get uh, foggy conditions. Uh, so that's why if you're sailing in the summer, early summer, uh, spring in the UK, especially the English Channel, where you get the sea fog, then it's important to have, for example, a, uh, a radar. Uh, we also have uh, dry and uh, warm air coming from the Africa, so it's coming from a continent, so it's continental and it's warm, so it's tropical. So that would normally bring uh, dry and warm weather to, uh, to the UK, even though it goes over the mid, it doesn't pick up too much uh, moisture. Another uh, air, front, uh, air mass that we have is the uh, polar continental air mass, uh, also coming from the land, it's coming from Russia. It's cold. It's the beast from the east, uh, so it, it normally brings a very cold weather in the in the winter. It can also bring some uh, some snow and rain because it goes over the North Sea and then it picks up um, uh, some moisture from there. Uh, the other major air mass that we have is the polar maritime air mass. Uh, it starts from Canada, Greenland. It starts very dry but it goes over the uh, North Atlantic and it picks up a lot of uh, moisture from there. And um, that would bring uh, uh, rain and snow to, uh, to Scotland and to Ireland. That's why Ireland is so, uh, so green, yeah? Like St. Patrick's Day yesterday, nice and green hats and everyone, yeah? So that's uh, probably where they got the green from, yeah? All right, so if you know what kind of wind uh, air mass you're getting, then you have a very good idea what kind of conditions they're gonna, gonna bring. Um, weather fronts, what is the front? So we have, if we have cold air and we have warm air or moist air here, then it will not mix. Um, it's like oil and water, so that we have a front here. When we first see the front like this, or the two different air masses, we do not know if it's a cold front or uh, a warm front. It's only when one of them, it's like an army, two armies, and then when one of the armies become uh, dominant, then we know what type of front it is. So here, the warm, moist air has become dominant. We have a warm front here. This is the symbol of a warm front um, with the... Um, uh, with the, uh, the, red, the red dots and this is a symbol. We also see that on the synoptic charts. Chris? The, yeah, sorry. Yeah, there's a question from Christopher Jones. How do you know yeah. what air mass is incoming? Is it part of the weather forecast? Uh, no, you know the direction. Uh, you know it from the direction. So if a southwesterly wind, you know that will come from the, uh, from the tropics, uh, from, the, well, from the equator, uh, warm uh, part of the uh, Atlantic. If it's coming from the east, it will come from Russia. As in the UK, I'm talking UK. Yeah. If you were in, uh, uh, if you were in the, on the mainland uh, Europe, then of course, uh, if it's, again, same thing. If it's coming from um, from the south, you will get the tropical continental, the dry, the dry uh, air from Africa 
it can also bring uh, a lot of uh, dust actually uh, the, the coming from Africa because it goes over Sahara, so it picks up all this uh, red dust. So you can get quite a, quite a foggy conditions actually uh, or dusty condition. So you know only uh, only where it's coming from with the uh, for the direction. So you know where it's coming from. You know not sure where it's going because that will also depend on the high and low pressures. Uh, okay, yeah, so I was thinking I was down here with the uh, cold front. So when the cold front starts to be, the cold air starts to be the dominant, then we have a cold front. And this is a uh, symbol, it's a, a blue line with some uh, triangles on it. Um, so what does warm fronts, what does it look like? Warm fronts are normally uh, associated with uh, with the nice nice weather. So if we have a, a nice day like this, we know that we are in a, we are in cold in cold weather. But these clouds here, the uh, serious clouds, they are made of um, ice crystals. They can indicate that a warm front is coming. So if a warm front is coming, then it means that warm air is coming in, and because warm air is uh, uh, less dense than cold air because it's warm, it's been warmed up, the molecules are uh, further apart, it will go on top of the uh, of the cold air. So the warm front coming in, the warm air is pushed up and goes on top of the cold air. I have another picture here on the next slide, which gives that a bit more in details. So up here, you see, this is the symbol that we will have on the synoptic chart. We have cold air in front, it's over here. And we have the warm front and then the warm air is coming and it's going on top of the cold air. So if you're out here, the first thing you would see would be the high clouds, the serious clouds or macro sky, you can also see sometimes. And then as uh, more warm air is coming, more moist air is coming, we get more and more clouds. So we get high level serious stratus clouds as we discussed last week. So stratus means layer. And as uh, the air comes in, then we get a middle layer here, ultrastratus, more layer clouds. And then in the end, just before the warm front, we get nimbo. Nimbo means rain bearing. We get nimbus stratus clouds, so rain bearing layer clouds here. And we get a lot of um, uh, rain just in front of the uh, warm front. So that's what that's what you can see when the, when the warm front is coming. You see the clouds and the cloud starts to build up. Cold yes. fronts. Yeah. Sorry. Um, Sarah has a question. I'm not sure if you answered. Um, is warmer weather synonymous with higher pressure? So come again. Is warmer weather synonymous with higher pressure? Warmer weather. Equal. Does it bring does it bring no, higher not, pressure? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. No, you actually, we talk about a warm, uh, a warm front coming. It doesn't mean that it's going to get warmer because it could, uh, that air is also moist here. So uh, if you have uh, moist air, that uh, will also will can actually bring down the temperature. So it's not necessarily that you get warm weather and, uh, and higher pressure. All right. Now, uh, cold front. So a cold front. The cold, the, the cold air is coming in like a, uh, like a, um, like a wedge, um, and it's pushing up the uh, the warm air. And when it does that, uh, then uh, it, it's uh, you'll have a better better picture. So it comes in, it comes in like a wedge over here, and sort of pushing up the the warm air. And when it does that then we get very unstable conditions here and we get a lot of uh, big clouds and we call them cumulus clouds and they are nimbus uh, cumulus. that means they are very towering big clouds and in this area here which is just on the front of the uh, cold front we get lots of rain um, and even thunder thunder showers here and then after the uh, after the cold front uh, has passed then we start to see, we can see some, uh, it clears up and we get some blue skies. We can still get some uh, one or two uh, cumulus clouds out here, which can give us uh, some small showers. I have, uh, I think on the next one here. Yeah, here I have them both together. Uh, so we can just uh, summarize here. So we have the warm front coming in 
and the warm air is being pushed up and it generates uh, clouds. So see how the clouds are thickening and then just on the edge of the warm front, which is here. Then we start to get some rain. Then we get a warm sector. So the air here is a bit warmer, a bit moist. And then we get the cold front coming in and it's sort of scooping up, scooping up the, uh, the warm air and it creates Coulombus nimbus, big, huge clouds that gives us a lot of rain, heavy rain and thunderstorms. And then after the cold front, then you start to get, you can see some uh, blue sky, but you have some, the odd, uh, odd cloud that gives it a shower or a bit of a squall. Um, also, uh, another thing I'd like to mention here uh, is that the cold front is moving a little bit faster. So that's why uh, these fronts will also start to develop into a low pressure or depression, which is what drives our weather systems. I will talk more about that in a, in a bit. Now, these fronts, do they collide? Uh, collide? Yes, they do. Uh, as um, the cold front is faster, it moves faster, then it catches up with the, um, catches up with the warm front and this sort of starts to, uh, to zip up uh, and become one. We call it an occluded front. And I have here on the next slide some uh, nice uh, pictures of that. So we are out here in the section AA. So this picture up here is showing if we were standing here in this section AA, we would have the warm front and the cold front there, as we discussed earlier. So there would be some rain there on this front here, and then there's rain on this front there. And the cold front is moving faster. So it's catching up with the, uh, with the warm front, sort of catching up like that. So we start to get a uh, occlusion here. So they start to zip up and then it moves a bit further. And then we get the two cold fronts, the two cold air masses has met up and they have pushed up the, um, the, 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 the warmer air. We have a bit of rain here on the warm front. We have a lot of rain here on the uh, cold front here, and then a bit and a lot that gives heaps of rain. So you will have heaps of rain here on the occluded, uh, occluded front where they're zipped up. So lots of rain there. Uh, we can also have what is called a stationary front. So these fronts, are, uh, these air masses are like armies. So if the warm air and the cold air, then none of them are dominant, the dominant one, stronger one, we can get a situation where they sort of just become stationary. So this is a sign for stationary front. Uh, normally there will not be much air here in this section. And we can also have a stationary front for quite a long time. So we can have a lot of rain coming in this, in this area for quite some time. All right, so let me just recap on the four fronts because these are the, the basic, the foundation for uh, reading a synoptic chart. We have warm front, warm air coming in, going on top of cold air, normally associated with uh, heavy cloud cover and a bit of rain on the front. And then after that, following right behind, usually we will have a cold front where the cold front is coming in and pushing like a wedge, pushing the warm air up, creating an area here where you see the very big towering uh, cumulus clouds and uh, nimbus, and they give lots of rain and um, also quite a bit of wind here. Then we had the stationary front, front where none of them are stronger, so they sort of none of the air masses are stronger. So we get a front where uh, nothing's happening and just a bit of rain going there. And then we have the uh, occluded front where the cold front is catching up with the, with the warm front and they sort of zip up and we get a lot of rain here at the occluded front. Please. Yeah. Yeah, just go back, please. Yeah, uh, Rosemary is asking if it's dependent on uh wind direction. Is that dependent on wind direction on the stationary front? The stationary, if um, that's a good question and I must admit, um, 
there will not be a lot of wind. Yeah, so uh, it could be that there is a, um, a high pressure there. Uh, and then we get this uh, situation where the two air masses are uh, not moving. Yeah, I don't know uh, wind direction if you're asking uh, from which, uh, as a where it's, uh, it's coming from the north or from the south or the east or the west in, in the UK. I must admit, I'm, I'm not sure how that will affect the uh, stationary front. But there will not be a lot of wind uh, when there's a stationary front. Okay. Uh, yeah, so let's just have a look at high and low pressure systems, and we're going to do a bit of um, a recap from uh, last uh, last week, uh, just to see how these high and low pressure systems are uh, generated. So what happens is that the sun is not heating the air, it's actually heating the earth. And when the earth is getting hotter, then it starts to heat up the uh, air above it. And uh, then the air will start to rise like the hot air balloon. And when it's rising up, the air molecules are further apart, so it becomes lighter. So it's generating a low pressure here. And then as it goes up, the air starts to cool and then it starts to sink down again. And as it sinks, it becomes more dense, it becomes heavier, it inerts a more pressure on the, uh, on the earth and it generates a high pressure. Uh, wind will move from high towards low. Yeah? So always going from high pressure towards the low pressure system. So that's how uh, uh, the weather is. Uh, this is the basic principle of, uh, of the winds and generating the wind, uh, wind systems. Let's look at more details uh, on the high and low pressure systems. We start with the high pressure system. Uh, high pressure is normally associated with uh, nice settled weather. Uh, we can have again the uh, uh, serious clouds or the um, high level ice, ice clouds, nice weather. Uh, this picture here um, uh, is actually the Bay of Biscay. Uh, and I, I took this picture when Natalie and I was uh, going across the Bay of Biscay last. Uh, well, I didn't take the picture, I, I downloaded the picture. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We need to get this drone. <laughs> yeah, well, to, uh, to, uh, to I see how how uh, high pressure. Uh, this is uh, the synoptic chart for the same period. Uh, so there's a high pressure just on top of the um, of the Bay of Biscay. You can see that you have the isobar here. These are the lines of uh, eagle pressure and the synoptic chart, and they are widely apart. That means that there is a very little wind, very light wind in this area. So high pressures are associated with nice uh, weather, uh, low winds. And uh, we, went, we went actually across uh, on, this, uh, on this high pressure. And this is what it was looking like <laughs> when we were sailing across. I don't know if you can see that. Mm -hmm. uh, light winds, it was great for spotting uh, dolphins. And we saw also a few whales, but, but not so great for sailing. Anyway, the more wind came later, and we went across in, uh, in less than four days. So it was quite nice. Low pressure is the complete opposite of uh, the high pressure. It's like an angry toddler, yeah? uh, very, very uh, aggressive system. You have here a uh, cyclone actually from, I think from the Caribbean. And you can see how the, the wind is moving around here and being sucked into this uh, low pressure system. You can also see on the uh, synoptic chart, here, there's a synoptic chart here. It's not from the same uh, situation, but uh, it's a low pressure. And you can actually see this system has already started to uh, decay a little bit, but it's very angry, very, very narrow uh, 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 isobars. The pressure lines here on the structure are very, very close. There's very, very, very strong winds here. Yeah? So low pressure uh, system, cyclones are very angry systems and uh, the wind is uh, being sucked in there to these systems. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so these uh, warm and cold fronts, these are also the ones that uh, generate uh, the depressions or the low pressures, which are actually the ones that drives the weather um, uh, in the UK or all the depressions are coming from, uh, from west, uh, moving uh, to, towards the east. And uh, the way a depression is, uh, is building up is that we have the warm front and then we have the cold front and the cold front is catching up and it gets like uh, you can say like 
spiral, if you want. Yeah, the spiral. And that generates this kind of system here. And then we start to get an area in here where we have a very low pressure. It is also affected, uh, of course, uh, by the jet streams that we discussed a little bit about um, uh, last, uh, last week. Uh, because those uh, jet streams, those uh, super conveyors of air streams uh, are sort of supercharging and driving these, uh, these pressure systems, uh, these depressions. Uh, after some time, um, the system will start to decay. Uh, that's when the uh, cold front is catching up further with the warm front and then they start to zip up as we discussed earlier. So we got a bit of rain on the warm front, lots of rain on the cold front and then heaps of amount of rain here uh, where the two fronts, uh, they meet up. Chris? Yeah. Yeah, uh, there's a question from Howard. So how can you tell the path of a depression? How can you tell a path of the depression? Uh, they will normally move uh, on the, in the uh, Northern Hemisphere, they normally move uh, towards, the, uh, towards the East, yeah. You cannot, uh, you cannot, um, uh, you know, for example, when they have cyclones, you cannot exactly uh, predict where those cyclones are going. And also um, we have something called uh, blocking highs, for example. Uh, at the Azores, I will talk about it a little bit later. And high pressure um, can actually, because they're pushing the air out, they can also sort of push these uh, pressure systems away and, uh, and, and divert these systems, yeah. Um, so it's difficult to say uh, exactly uh, the path of it. Uh, in, the, um, in the weather forecast, many times you will have also, they will also mention how fast these systems, uh, the depressions are moving, yeah. Um, so if you start to uh, do a deep dive into um, into uh, weather forecasts from the from the middle, okay, uh, yeah. So a bit of physics is also good, but a bit of physics on a first uh, evening. And uh, so we have something called uh, by Spiot law, and uh, that tells us if we are on the northern northern hemisphere, if we are on the southern hemisphere, it's the other way around. That if we are standing with the, our wind. Uh, with the back to the wind, then we will have on the left hand side, we will have a low pressure system. And then on the right hand side, we have a high pressure system. Also, uh, if you look at the high pressure system, you can see how the uh, wind is moving around in a clock, uh, clock direction. And it's move, it's pointing a little bit outwards, yeah, because the wind uh, in a in an anticyclone and in a high pressure is always uh, moving out and it's moving over to the low pressure. So they're moving a bit outwards. In the low pressure system, you can see how the wind is moving a little bit inwards because they're being sucked in. And so this is a conversion system. It converge into here. So that means that if we are down here in this area, here we would have a southerly wind down here. The same thing we would have over here with a southerly winds here and then where we are standing, the wind will be coming from the north. So when you are looking at the synoptic charts, when we're looking at later, then you can see which, uh, which way the wind are going because we will look at the high and the low pressure systems and the uh, iso isobars, these are the isobars. And then you can see what kind, what kind of direction the uh, wind will have. And also we can get an idea about the strengths uh, of the wind in that area. All right, so uh, synoptic charts. Before I start talking about that, I'm just going to do a so, quick synoptic charts. So we have a synoptic chart. So when I uh, downloaded uh, Monday, uh, we can see a lot of information on that. Uh, we have over here, we have a, a low pressure system. This even says an L on it. So you can see that low pressure system. You also have the, uh, the pressure here, the 965 is quite a low pressure. Uh, this uh, pressure system has already started to decay a little bit. So we have an occluded front here, and then we have cold front here, and we have uh, lots of warm fronts here. Down here, we have a system of high pressure, high pressure systems here. So there could be a blocking high, normally in the summer. It's not yet summer, but normally in the summer, we have a uh, high pressure system over the uh, uh, Spanish uh, Peninsula. Uh, you might have heard about in the weather forecast that they talk about the Azores high. So also sometimes in the Azores high, they can also be block, uh, blocking 
when the, the Christians are coming uh, this way here. So they would block them and push them uh, towards Iceland. Uh, we can see up here that the uh, isobars are very, very close. There would be lots of wind up here. A good way um, to learn how to use and read these uh, synoptic charts is, uh, for example, uh, when you sit and are having breakfast in the morning and you look out and you see the clouds outside, then have a chat with your better half uh, about what kind of weather it is and then where you think you are on the uh, synoptic charts. And then go and uh, download the synoptic charts. They're available on the mid office and then see if you are right. Uh, you can, of course, also do that when you go for a walk in the evening and you see some red sky and you see some clouds and try to guess where you are in the, uh, in the, if you're in front of a warm front, a cold front, and so on. Uh, another way you can also do is uh, go on the internet and then uh, I quite like uh, Windy. So uh, let me bring up Windy here. So I took a picture of um, a, a snapshot of Windy. Uh, sort of the same the same time as this uh, synoptic chart. So you can see we have Greenland up here on the, uh, on the windy, there's Greenland there. And then we have the low pressure below there, which is uh, also low pressure here. And you can see that we have uh, dark red here. That means lots of wind here. Uh, so there's also lots of wind here in this area here. And other thing that uh, windy can do is can show us the rain. So if you say we have warm fronts here, so we will uh, expect to have some uh, rain here and also more rain here on the cold front and then lots of rain up here on the fluid fronts. So let me bring up the, um, the rain. So this uh, windy uh, image is showing us where we have the rain. So we have Greenland again up here. It's not so clear for you, I think, but this Greenland up here and you can see lots of rain here along the east coast of Greenland. So we go here, so east coast of Greenland, lots of rain, so it tallies, yeah, so it's beautiful how the theory and the uh, actual is uh, coming together. We have the we have the fronts coming, the warm fronts coming out here, they're coming out here, going towards the UK. Yeah, see there? And then we have the two cold fronts coming down here with more rain down here, which is uh, the ones here. Okay. It goes into a higher higher level now because, as you might remember, after the cold fronts, we will have an area where there will be not so much clouds, yeah, maybe blue skies. Windy can also show us the clouds. We can have a sort of oh, there we go. Here you have the cold front coming down from uh, from Greenland, and then you have that area behind the cold front where we have. Less, less cloud, blue skies, some showers. See how it is? Nice, huh? So a, good, a really good way is to play with these things, yeah? And um, I quite uh, like, uh, I call it the weather funnel when I do, uh, when I go sailing, uh, when I have to do a long passage. I would start at the synoptic uh, level, that means high level, and then start moving down, looking at the shipping forecast, and then move into the inshore forecast and so on, before I start to look at my windy apps and all these things, yeah. Uh, there's another app called Passage Weather. It's also quite nice to use for uh, passage planning and so on, but the weather, it shows you also the, um, uh, the sea states and so on. You don't forget that uh, it's very important. Uh, one thing is the wind when you go sailing, uh, but wind we can deal with, uh, meaning that we can reduce our sails. But sea state is where people get caught out yeah, uh, in big seas. Yeah? So you always check uh, also the, um, uh, the sea states uh, when you do uh, passage planning and so on. Okay, uh, that brings us uh, to the end of uh, the presentation. Um, um, can you talk a little, a little bit more about the sea state? One question. And then second question, what type of clouds would we expect at occluded front and uh, stationary front? Uh, occluded front, you will get uh, a stratus clouds. Uh, one of the first pictures, a stratus nimbus. Uh, so that means a layer of rain bearing clouds, yeah? Uh, lots, uh, lots, of, um, uh, lots of water in those, yeah? Uh, also in the stationary, you get 
maybe not so dark, but it also will be a uh, layer. Yeah, so C state is uh, tremendously important that you check C state uh, because uh, you don't want uh, you don't want to go sailing in, uh, and C states can pick up very very quickly, especially if uh, you're sailing in tidal waters. Uh, then if you have wind against tide and so on, then uh, C state can be um, uh, can be what's gonna gonna kill the journey. Yeah, it's not gonna make it very nice. One. What about X C weather? I heard about it. Uh, you, you have to. Uh, all these apps, they're all based on the same uh, in, uh, the same uh, information, and it's just a presentation that's different. They all take the information from the same uh, same source, which is the grip file, yeah. and uh, it's just a presentation. So the one that you like, you, you use that. Um, if you are sailing in the same area, I always say to people, okay, you have an app, uh, use it, but uh when you're out sailing and you and you and you check what the weather is check the app that it's showing that they're showing the reality yeah there's also um on the med office uh, website uh, you can find uh real uh real li live information about uh, weather and waves also there's also boys sea state it's called a uh, marine observations and uh can look at your app and say okay your app is uh, showing that there will be 3.3 meter waves uh, at the isle of Scillies, and then you can look at the boy which is close to the isle of Scilly, and then see if that is correct so it's good uh, if if you find an app which uh, you like uh, then verify uh, check that app against what is the weather forecast when you are out look out the window and say okay the app is saying that what's the wind uh, weather outside yeah so you get confident that your app is uh, for your area is the right app. It's very important, yeah. And also, if you're doing uh, passage planning, longer passage, uh, then of course you check more uh, more sources, um, and, and you don't pick the weather forecast that suits your passage. Yeah. Meaning that oh, this one looks nice, and that will give us good wind. Always, <laughs> always take the one that gives you the worst <laughs> weather, yeah. Uh, that's probably what's going to end up, yeah. And you might be pleasantly surprised, but it's uh, if you plan for the worst and hope for the best thing. So it's very important that you uh, check more than one source when especially when you're doing offshore sailing and longer passes like uh, uh, when Natya and I was going to cross the uh, Bay of Biscay, uh, I we were looking at the weather 10 days before and, and, and checking and seeing and how it is and, and, and what are the weather forecasts to make sure that we get uh, get the uh, the right weather when you're out there. You don't want to get caught out in the uh, in the Bay of Biscay um, in a, in, a, in a depression and, and, and huge waves, yeah. uh, the sea state in the Bay of Biscay uh, can be uh, very, very rough like a washing machine. Uh, the main reason for that is because you have the Atlantic uh, Ocean that's very deep, several kilometers. And then when you get to the Bay of Biscay, uh, just the north of uh, Spain there, it goes up and it gets 60 meters. So uh, you can imagine this uh, momentum of the waters and everything coming in and then suddenly you have um, uh, very sh well, relatively shallow water and that gives a washing machine effect in the, in the westerly wind there. So it's not nice to be out there. But uh, I liked your uh, thought that if you're unsure, don't leave port or, or always err on the worst weather. Right, well, thank you very much anyway. Yeah. Appreciate the session. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Right, yeah. Bye, thank, you. thank you very much. Right. Bye. Yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. you, Chris. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Thank Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.